Welcome on in. It's time for another edition of Friday Night Lights. I'm Mike Fenner. She's Ashley Kaiser. Hard to believe we've hit week number four in local high school football <laughs> with some big matchups on the show on tap for you tonight. That's right. We lead off with a Region 6 showdown between the two biggest schools in our area. Let's head into it. Erie High hosting McDowell for their home opener. We're going to start here off in the first quarter. Trojans have the ball as Blaze Myers gets sacked by number 18, Mikel Pope. Oh, McDowell gets another shot at it here. Myers pitches it to Stefan Porter as he drives it through the middle and in for a score. It's a touchdown Trojan, six to nothing. Myers pass tipped off of the fingers of Erie's Tate here as Kramer recovers in the end zone and it's good for a McDowell touchdown. Trojans pull ahead 13 to nothing now. Erie does get one back here in the second with a handoff to Anthony Matteo. He swings to the McDowell sideline in for a Royals touchdown, making it 13 to 6 as Erie trails. Now check out this next one here. We got Myers going to pass to the left corner. Tate makes the jumping interception wow. for Erie in the end zone. Pretty incredible play. Now McDowell kept their foot on the gas in the second half of the game. And on the Plyler Entry System scoreboard, McDowell tops Erie 47 to 21. Now the Cathedral Prep Ramblers playing a non-regional game against St. Francis at the half preps of 28 to 26. Check this out. Third quarter, St. Francis preps. Luke Costello hands it off to Lewis there. He powers through St. Francis' defense, fighting for every last yard. It leads to this next one here with a carry from Costello through the pack and in for a touchdown for Prep, 34 to 32. Back and forth game here. We've got Terrence Pendergrass as you find a cap to bring in the Raiders in for a score, taking back the lead. Down to 30 seconds left in the game. Prep is down by six. Costello's dancing, looks for Griffin, Griffin Potts as he cuts to the middle. Pass is complete for a prep touchdown. Now the game's tied 40 to 40, and you won't believe it, but the game goes into six overtime. <laughs> and Prep finally wins it 78 to 72 incredible game this evening and a great job by you getting that last touchdown to send it to the first overtime an incredible finish there at Dollinger Field let's move around the region now let's go to Carbonito Field Fort LaBeouf home for Fairview this was another wild finish in Waterford just before the end of the third quarter here it's Fort LaBeouf's Aiden Lessig gets the handoff running through the Fairview D down to the one yard line trying to find the land of six there in the fourth and one play here, Lessig again with the football runs it in for the second Bison touchdown of the night. And now on the other end, after LaBeouf gets six, here's Fairview's number six, Vinny Campoli, a quarterback, throwing a bomb down the field. Caught by Tyler Vecchio here, putting them in scoring territory. And then here for Fairview, it's going to be Campoli running the football in for Fairview's first score of the night. In this one, it's Fort LaBeouf in triple overtime, topping the Tigers by a final of 36 to 35. Some great games tonight. Let's go to another one here at Ted Miller Stadium in Northeast. Great pickers in a close one here in the first half with General McLean. Seven to six, pickers leading in the second quarter. Northeast quarterback Jackson Humes picked off by McLean's Cohen Beachley, who comes up with the takeaway. McLean, though, no points out of it. Pickers have it again. Still in the second, Humes back to pass, intercepted again. Justin Burgos with the takeaway for the Lancers. But again, no points out of that drive. So right before the half, still 7-6 until Northeast tries and connects on a 37-yard field goal. Joel Morey makes it 10-6, great pickers at the half. In the third, Humes finds Carter Crozier on the slant. Completion, first down, Northeast marching into the red zone. Later in the drive, it's Humes on the quarterback keeper, and he will find pay dirt. 17-6 Northeast on that touchdown run. Northeast tops General McLean by a final of 38-12. Let's go and stay in East County. Harbor Creek Huskies home for the Corey Beavers in Region 5 action. In the first here, Beavers with the football. Nolan carries pass intercepted. Calvin Selensky with the takeaway for the Huskies over the middle. And now Harbor Creek with the rock. Here it's Heath Betts of the Pitch to Tyshawn Jones, our Bob Ferrando Ford World, Ford World Athlete of the Week, easy for me to say. Takes it in for six. Harbor Creek goes up a score in the first. Later, carry out of the gun, back to pass. Downfield, it's complete to Ryland Smith. Called a 20-yard pickup for the Beavers. But on that same drive, here's carry back to pass again. And again, looks over the middle. Selensky's second pick of the game. Oh, and he's got big ideas. He's got big plans, and he's booking them for six. He goes 90 yards to the house 
Harbor Creek scores. However, in the end, Corey rallies to win on the road 29 to 21. Eisenhower visiting Seneca Knights. Open it up here. We got quarterback Sean Pascuzzi with the play action to pass to wide open. Ryan Chambers with the first down inside the 10. Just two plays later, we've got the Knights run the counter here. Cole Kellogg running through a hole into the end zone for a six. Knights up six to nothing. The Bobcats will try to answer on this next one here. Nolan Seasbury fires it across the middle to Vincent Randazzo for the first down completion, but the drive would stall. The Knights' next possession just past midfield. Pascuzzi keeps it himself and races 46 yards to the house to extend the lead 14 to nothing. Incredible. Eisenhower beats Seneca 35 to 6. That's your final score. And to Union City we go as we continue our coverage tonight. Bears hosting Iroquois this evening. We start in the second here. Bears leading at 7 0 for the Braves. Christian Kreshak will have his pass intercepted, picked off by Austin Brown, and returns at 10 yards. Taken down, preserves the 10-point lead going into halftime. Let's go to the third. Same score, still 7-0 Union City. Going for it on fourth down. But quarterback Austin Sherwood gets dumped, swallowed up by Sam Keitlinger. Braves take over on downs with a nice TFL there. In the fourth, Bears with another fourth and long attempt. This time, better results on their side. Skyler Olmstead gets the pitch, and he's gone for the Bears' touchdown. Union City topping Iroquois by a final of 14 to six. All right, down to Mercer County, Lakeview hosting Maplewood. Tigers on the road tonight. Third offensive play here for Lakeview. Layton Zacherl launches downfield for Clarence Barber. 40-yard pickup and a first down. And then next play, it'll be Aiden Osborne punching it in for a five-yard touchdown. Sailors, extra point no good, but they lead it six to nothing. Maplewood's fourth offensive play here. Back to pass. Danik Hinkson catches on the deflected pass here and He's going to run it back for a 39-yard touchdown. Extra point good, 13-0 Lakeview. Late first quarter, same score. Mitchell Tingley will get a hold of the rock here, and he's going to go six yards into the end zone. 20 to nothing at this point. Lakeview tops Maplewood in a shutout, 46 to nothing in Mercer County. Other scores from around the area. It's Conneaut over Warren, 24 to 12. Cambridge Springs beats Reynolds, 50 to 7. Sagertown falls, 48 to 6 to Mercer. More games in high school football tomorrow. It'll be three games in District 10. Cochranton at Kennedy Catholic in the afternoon at 1 o'clock. Mercier's prep heads to Rogers Field in Albion to take on Northwestern at 7 p.m. Oil City and Franklin at 7 o'clock in the Route 8 rivalry as well. Now coming up next in Friday Night Lights. Head down to UPMC Park, Seawolves and Richmond Flying Squirrels in action. That's next here on FNL.